What is this old bear round wall doing in the middle of one of the busy cities in the Netherlands? Which 15-year-old countess was once besieged here with her army? And what does this castle and the city of Leiden have to do with Vikings? Watch along and learn all the known facts about this hidden fortress. Welcome to the city center of one of the busy cities in the Netherlands. We are standing here in front of an old city gate that reveals that there is more to be found here than just a back street. Above this gate, the Dutch Lion guards the city's coat of arms. It was built in 1658 as an entrance to the birthplace of Leiden. In the center of this park lies a castle that already was a tourist attraction in the 17th century because of its rich history. The castle is situated on a motte, a man-made hill, in a strategic location between two arteries of the Rhine. The hill is probably constructed in the 9th or 10th century, initially with a wooden fort on top. Yes, that means you are standing here in the oldest building of Leiden, around which houses have slowly been built since then. But why was it built? We can't imagine it now, but at that time none other than Vikings were notorious in Northern Europe for their raids, not only by sea, but also by river. As a defense, large wooden castles were often built at river branches where the regional population and their livestock could flee in case of plundering. Such a defensive fort against Vikings was first built in nearby Rheinsberg, but in 1050 it was decided that the garrison would be moved here, perhaps because of the destruction of the Rheinsberg Mott in 1047 by Henrik III. At that time, Vikings were already becoming less of a threat, but such a fortress also had a central function in the region. Coins were minted here. There was a garrison, and you can still see the well in the middle of the building that provided fresh water for local residents. The master of the castle was called the Burgrave, who, next to the bishop and count, was the most important man in the region. When the garrison was moved here in the year 1050, its first Burgrave was also appointed, which indicates that a reasonable settlement had also developed around the castle in this river landscape. The name of the first Burgrave is unknown, but the next three were called Oluin and have a direct link with the name of the city of Leiden. In a document dated in 1108, the Burgrave Adelwino de Ledin is mentioned, which means Oluin of Leiden. This is the first time that the name of the city of Leiden is mentioned in a source. The name Leiden roughly means near the water and probably dates back to Roman times as Lythen. But contrary to popular belief, the Roman fort of Mytilo, located a little further away, fell into disrepair in the beginning of the Middle Ages and Leiden has no Roman origins. Around 1150, the hill was raised from 5 to its current 12 meters and the wooden fence was replaced by tuff. The current entrance was not yet there in that tough stone wall, and this small door, right next to the water of the river, was the only access to the fortress. It was long thought that in 1203, the now 90 cm thick walls protected Countess Ada when she came to power at the age of 15, following the death of her father. But her jealous uncle William I 
would not allow that to happen, and he besieged Ada's castle and her army until she surrendered and was banished to the island of Texel. However, recent sources doubt whether 18th century drawings like this one are correct and whether Ada did not entrench herself in her own newly constructed defence tower Gravenstein. What is certain is that the walls of the Burks suffered considerable damage during the Loon War that followed. Between 1225 and 1295 the castle was rebuilt and fortified with the most modern invention, brick. This was much stronger, but also more expensive than tough, and if you look closely, you will see that in parts of the wall a thin layer of brick was built around the tough to keep it affordable. Of course the hill provided protection from attackers, but the loopholes in the wall allowed archers to fire on enemies from a distance, and the battlements on top of the walls also allowed rocks and rubble to be thrown in defense. These were the heydays of the fort, and Burgrave Jacob van Leiden was a powerful man. The locals paid him a toll for the crossing via the nearby bridge, access to fresh drinking water, and of course protection. However, as the city's population grew, the castle's function as a refuge for all its inhabitants became more difficult, which is why the castle's function changed and it was used as a prison, among other things, until Burgrave Claude Lamoral sold the castle to the city of Leiden in 1651 for the then enormous sum of 70,000 guilders, the equivalent of 32,000 euros today. The wealthy Netherlands were in a golden age due to overseas trade, and the municipality transformed the abandoned site into a luxurious park the remains of which can still be found today. The current lavish entrance dates from that period and it was enlarged in 1685. The coats of arms you see around the entrance are those of various 17th century mayors who at that time also were Burgrave. Above the entrance, two lions protect the Leiden city coat of arms with the two keys. After the sale of the Burks to the city, the function of Burgrave slowly disappeared throughout Europe, but the title itself still exists. The current Dutch King Willem Alexander is even officially Burgrave of Antwerp. And just like the Burgrave, the function of the castle became mainly decorative and recreational since 1651. The park is no longer as luxuriously decorated as in this 18th century print, but those in the know can clearly see that large parts of the wall were restored and even completely rebuilt in the 20th century. In the 17th century, the castle was decorated with the same type of lime trees as the large trees that now proudly tower above the castle and provide shade for park visitors in the summer. The oldest parts of this wall not only saw a village grow around these branches of the Rhine, but also saw it slowly change into a city in which ever larger churches, houses and the famous cloth industry emerged and around which the Kingdom of the Netherlands eventually emerged. That is the story of these old hidden walls. Thanks for watching and see you again in one of our next videos.